well, speak to you. Yeah, great to speak to you too, Pedro. Um, and you're calling from New York. Yes, I am. I'm lock, lockdowning Locking here down as I was, um, in the middle of a tour. Um, just as this all breaks down and my, my sweetheart is in New York on a job. Well, she was on a job here. So I just figured it would be sensible to just um, come yeah. straight to, to New York. Yeah, you don't want to be traveling um, across the Atlantic. Uh, well, you just uh, want to be with the people, the, the people you love as soon as possible. So you can actually yeah. you know, support each other through this space, which you don't know how long is you're going to be. But um, it's probably part of, part of uh, yeah. as uh, our profession is to make quick decisions sometimes. And we have to be very sensitive what's the most sensible uh, yeah. option. And that was the most sensible option for me it was to come here. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, so let's kind of forget about lockdown for now. And yeah, um, yeah I, I just w uh, was interested in you, you have this dual career or more than dual career as a jazz musician and a classical musician um, as, a, as a drummer and a percussionist. So I, I'm just interested to hear how that came about um, in terms of your childhood experiences of music and um, if, whether you had a musical family or how did you get into it? Right. Um, thank you, Tom. Um, uh, it's it's quite simple how, how things uh, um, planned out um, early on. Uh, I have no musical family at all. My parents are tone deaf. They cannot really clap on time, which is um, quite embarrassing sometimes. <laughs> but uh, but they are very supportive. So when they felt there was there was some. Um, some desire to make music and that started through pots and pans in the kitchen absolutely where every drummer kind of shows signs through sound and how they love to be exploring noises all the time um, so that's the first encounter with with the path of music I would say um, but my sister and me were both the same so we supported each other so my, my sister would play piano and she would um, jam with me and I would jam with her and we'd play every weekend at a local church in Lisbon. I'm from Lisbon, Portugal. I, okay. I grew up there. And, um, and classical music came when, when I was already playing drums um, because it was the instrument I had access to. It's all about the environment you are in, really. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I had access to that. So that's kind of inspired me to really invest time, even with no lessons in drum kit. But someone said, oh, there's a conservatory. My mom was like, what is that? I don't know what a conservatory is. Oh, there's a day that you should go um, and take your son there for an audition. And sadly, my mom was working, my father as well. My godmother, Elisa, is a savior here, where she goes, queues up two hours before um, the, the actual audition to have a space. And then she found me out an audition. I came back next week and I was eight or nine. And I got into the room and they asked me, so why are you here? And I said, I love to play the drums. I said, really? Okay. Do you read? Oh, no, what is that? <laughs> and so I just play anything and I just jam on the snare. That's all, I, all they gave me, the snare. Now I understand why, because there is the marching drum technique, the, right. all the control of the strokes, the vocabulary of the fingers and hands, right? Sure. Like for piano players, the scales. Um, so basically, um, so I did that and that was kind of the beginning of the path of the classical world and I kept playing drums too. So basically from that moment on, naturally, both parts were already in sync, you know, without even knowing what I was doing. I was investing time both in classical and outside of, I would say, 20th century music, which would be, of course, initially rock with Deep Purple, uh, with... Um, Phil Collins, those records really affected me. Peter Gabriel really affected me immensely. So I, I went, I was going back and forth until then when I was 14, 15, I had a chance to do youth orchestra. We would tour around Portugal playing Mendelssohn, Beethoven, um, some Haydn. And I was like, wow, I, I don't know what this is, but this sounds great. And the drums have a, such an important role, yet it's just two notes. How is that possible? So from that moment on until now, and I'm still now today thinking about these early encounters of that music, and I always try to uh, bridge the gap between both. I don't know if, you, if it makes sense for you. Yeah. I'm always trying to see 
the meaning of one note in the right place and how much weight you should give to two notes and how that translates to swing, to jazz drumming, to folk music. Um, so yeah, so kind of in, in a nutshell, that's kind of how those worlds um, developed into what I am now. So tell me um, what brought you to London for the first time. From Great question. Great. I love that question. Basically, I was, um, after 15 years old, so I was doing those summer courses. I forgot to mention Barcelona. Really, I went to Taller de Music's uh, very good jazz school in Barcelona, and I learned about Afro-Cuban rhythms and everything, mm -hmm. swing. And... I start working professionally in Lisbon as soon as I came back because there would be bars that would call me, Pedro, come play with us. So we would do Bill Withers, uh, all these um, records from um, the Stax records, all the Motown sounds. I would be exposed. I, would, I wasn't really nailing it per se. I was just responding to whatever I was listening. And I was like, and they seemed happy. And I was like, great. And um, so from 15 to 18, I was professionally really active in Lisbon scene. So I would study during the day, do the classical studies at night, long days. I couldn't imagine, I could imagine doing that again, but it's, it's very tiring. Like waking up for this, uh, for this interview with you, you know, <laughs> it's like, yeah. it's, very, it's like, you have to make a big effort and, and then it's worth it. That's the thing. It's worth it because by the time I, would, I am 18, I realized I I want to I really would love to branch out and be a little fish in a big uh, pond, you know, and see right. how I can how can I swim above? How can I have be be have some some sort of uh, importance and something to give? Yeah. And soon enough, I I realized as a great classical. Um, actually, before that happened, I wanted to study just jazz fully. I was really committed. I play drum kit all the time. Why don't I just commit? To, um, to being a full-time jazz musician. But um, what happened was I applied for the Guildhall course. Um, and um, what happened was when I emailed the guy saying, oh, I would like to come this year with my very poor English already then. And uh, thankfully I had a lot of people around me that supported helping me writing the right things. And yeah, yeah. Being, you know, I, I know it's, it's a different thing, you know, to be in an international yeah. college. Uh, yeah. to, if not right, uh, but um, I said I would like to come this year, and he said, "Sorry, we have no vacancies for you this year. You have to wait another year." And I was like, "I, I don't really want to wait another year. I don't want to do the gap year thing. I want to just go on." And I was at the conservatory in Lisbon, and I was already getting ready for my final recital, which is the biggest thing in Lisbon before I go to college. And I already yeah. I had all the repertoire under my hands, all the marimba stuff, the vibraphone, multi percussion, timpani. So that same day, the jazz department said to me, "Sorry, you, we have to wait a year to let you in." Uh, I went to the classical teacher, Richard Benjafield, which I'm very grateful for. He's now the head of the department, and I said, "Can I play for you, please? I have a marimba piece. Can I play for you?" And yes, of course. Go listen five minutes, play for him. I said, "Would you like to come this September?" And I was like, God, God, it's just, I, I, I can't imagine even now feeling, feeling goosebumps of the feeling of going to a foreign country and yeah. opening a door to something else that I, I didn't, I wasn't sure really. So that's how we all started. So I got to the Guildhall um, 
in the classical course instead of the jazz, but I'm so grateful because again, those two paths are yeah. really still synced and still working yeah. along together, you know? Well, I mean, I can think of, um, you know, Dave Holland, Jason Ribello, Shabaka Hutchings, they've all um, studied the jazz course at Guildhall. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the, yeah. the classical course. Did I say jazz? Yeah, I'm, yeah I did, they did jazz yeah. and oh, oh, I, I believe maybe Julian Joseph too. I might be wrong. About I'm not that, sure about Julian uh, Joseph. No, probably not. But um, it, it's, it's one of the first jazz course, that's for sure, at the Guildhall. Yeah. Uh, in in the UK and, and definitely in Europe, I'm sure. But I was having access to the jazz course through the classical, and that's why for me it was enriching to have and uh, to be the odd guy in terms of who's this guy coming to play drums sometimes. He's a oh, he's Pedro. He's just you know, he's doing his thing, you know. And and now yeah. and I was happy to be that guy, you know, to be the odd yeah. guy. That I was so hungry to 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 know, to learn, and yet I felt the classical really, really stretched my hearing, stretched my awareness of um, history and how things are connected to, through the centuries, because there's so much music before the 20th century, right? There's so much to know or to oh, be yeah. aware of to begin with. Yeah. And, um, as, and as a drummer, you, you, you do yourself a favor because there's, of course, a, a, so much to learn just from the records, just one decade alone from the 50s. As, as far as jazz drumming goes, there's so much to learn from it. Yeah. But I benefited more for the big picture while at school. You know, mm. Learn the curve, learn the curve until now. And that was kind of my path. And I'm, I'm really grateful I got the chance to, you know, to, to be at the Guildo, grateful to my colleagues and I had great opportunities. And that's what really launched me into the next stages. Uh, England. Yeah. Um, I have to mention as well Pete Saberton at Guildhall. I don't know if you know about this. I know Pete, yeah. yeah Pete he died was, a while ago. No, yes, no. he passed away. Pete Saberton was the guy that really invested in me, uh, being from the jazz course, invested in me to play his music in his classes. So I must have uh, e eternal gratitude to Pete Saverton and Bruno yeah. Einan as well because they were yeah. hello. Bruno was a fellow, so yeah. I just had to put it out there, and I would like that to be on record too. You know what I mean? But why did you apply to City Music Foundation, and what did you think uh, City Music Foundation was doing before you applied for it? Okay, good question. I heard about it because of Jenny Cashman. Um, Abram Wilson's foundation, and she told me, Pedro, there's this, um, there's this foundation doing amazing work to develop um, early careers and people that are thriving in this freelance world and making some good statements musically in different scenes. And I was like, great, this is fabulous. And please, uh, I'm going to vouch for you and find someone else to vouch for you as well. And hopefully you'll get, you'll get in. So let's get all the material together. And it actually was great for me. Do you know why? Because in the, in the amount of uh, six years where you are, first year at Guildhall until you start working, mm. um, because I, I had the big honor to start doing the husband and Ronnie Scott on my last year of Guildhall. So I was wow. being a student and being a professional, full on seven nights a week, um, 250 people every show, access to play for an audience for, for two, three, four years. So I had a big um, resume already under my belt, which was very good to look into, look back at, because you forget when you are present, which is important in music to be present and enjoy what you're doing now, not yeah. thinking about the future or the past. Yes. Uh, it realized me to acknowledge my achievements at that far with and being humble about it not being like oh my god look at me just achieved so much no it's like what's next okay what's next now and it mm -hmm. really made me think what we would like to achieve initially it was like can i just make a jazz trio or a jazz quartet uh, which would be the obvious thing especially as a drummer yeah you know doesn't matter i'm not judging there's things that are more um mainstream than others and that's fine we are all different we all have different statements to make but then after I made the application, they accepted it, and then I start to see what is exactly going to challenge me the most. And um, at the time, uh, a friend and also 
um, people in the arts said, you, why don't you explore your show, like at the solo show, because you, 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 you delve so much into different, uh, back, in different um, uh, traditions, right? I, I, I love African drumming, I love classical, I love jazz. I love to communicate. I love to have, give people a good time. So how can I blend that all together and make a 75 minute show? And that was a big challenge. It was a big challenge. So that's, I, I, I but so from the moment I heard from CMF and knowing the, the potential and the help they could give me, I felt it was the best thing I ever did, you know? Mm.